everyone, and welcome to the ASMR Review Show. So this video is going to be a little different from the way I do things normally. Uh, it's going to be a little more lo-fi, because I'm just using the camera to record, not my microphones. And that's because what I'm going to do is this is like a part two to my uh, guitar ASMR video going to be showing you some more of the stuff I have, including my amps and guitars. Uh, I thought no one would care about that video, but a couple people asked for some more stuff. So that's what we're going to do. I won't be on camera too much because I'm going to be using the camera angles to show you all the stuff, but I thought I'd at least say hello to you here, let you know what I'm drinking for tonight. This is the Slackwater What the Fog New England IPA. be a bit more of a different vibe for the video. But if you want to see some of my amps, some of my guitars, that's what we're going to do. So enjoy. Hello. Okay, let's begin. So this here is my sort of main digital amp that I like to use. Uh, this is, as you can see there, the Fender Mustang 4. And it's a, a twin speaker digital amp. There's two speakers. I think they're 75 watts each. I don't remember all the exact specs about my equipment, so you know, don't don't add me on that. Um, and yeah, this is a very nice digital lamp. It's uh, got a lot of different like amp models on it and modulations, effects, delays, uh, reverbs. It's uh, all in all a very nice amp. Um, definitely a digital amp if you know you're against that sort of thing well you know that this is digital that's how it is um but i really like it this is my main one sort of uh growing up and uh was very good for messing around playing on with uh lots of different sounds so uh let's get a closer look first off sorry about the dust you know i uh i haven't really cleaned this very often that's not very relaxing let me turn the switch on here in the back There's a lot of a hiss for it right now. So we've got the screen here, displays everything for you. All your controls are here. And then you have these extra little buttons here to turn on your stomp boxes, like your overdrive, add your reverb or delay, or anything like that. And this foot switch over here, four buttons on it. You can either have it like to turn the effects on and off or to go down between different ones, right? So you'd switch it there, and then you can go here up to one, two, up by 10, right? This setting here was one that came with the amp. It was to sort of recreate the uh, intro sound of Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden, hence the uh, Black Hole vibe. There's a whole lot to this amp. Uh, there's a tap as well for your delay. There's a tuner on it as well. Very nice. A lot of great stuff on this amp. Buzzing's not probably the most relaxing thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very good one. Lots of stuff on it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of all the, the distortions and stuff like that, but the modulations are great. There's this like stereo modulation delay on here, uh, and it's a really great sounding delay. It's like a delay with like a bit of a weird whoosh to it. It's a very good one, that's for sure. Okay, moving on, this next amp I have for you, this is sort of the main amp I've been using for like more of a, I don't know, quote-unquote natural sound. Uh, this is the Orange Crush Pro 60 watt amp. Um, it's a solid state amp, not a tube amp, not a digital, and pretty much like from what I've heard, one of the best solid state amps out there for just that real good natural sound. And I've always wanted a really nice orange amp. This is a more recent addition to the collection. Um, so I really like the sound of this one. Orange is it's like very dirty and loose and grimy. Uh, and it's perfect for all that stoner and sludge metal for just something that sounds like it's just like ripping in there, like a oh, real brutal and stuff. And here's just a little closer look at the amp from Crush Pro 60. It's got two channels, clean, 
dirty master volume with reverb switches between the dirty and the clean. Nice orange light to tell you when it's on. And then just your EQs and your gains for all of this. Um, one thing I like that's really cool you can do with this um, is that if you have the master volume low but the clean channel volume high, it kind of already starts to get into a bit of a dirty sound. Um, so if you want to keep it a nice clean sound, you want to have the channel volume low and the master volume high. Uh, the same thing goes for the dirty channel. You know, if you've got that gain up pretty high, you want the channel volume low. Otherwise, I don't know, I think it gets a little uh, too broken up, too crackly. So, you know, it's a very nice sound. And last but certainly not least, we have my bass guitar amp. Um, this is a Bassmaster XM100 from Yorkville. Um, I actually am not sure about this one. It was, um, like my old bass amp was like, uh, oh, I forget what it was. It was like a 75 watt one. It was like an angled one, kind of sat on the ground at an angle, and that one broke on me. I think I put a little too much distortion on the bass going through that, trying to recreate the Cliff Burton sound. Um, but so then at this one, I basically, I, I needed an amp right before I did a show, and this one was on sale for like a hundred bucks at uh, Long and McQuaid. So I was just like, uh, it's got volume, it's got EQ, uh, good enough for me. <laughs> so, so I bought it, went with it. Um, but it's pretty nice, it gets the job done. Um, you know, it's uh, it doesn't have to be very complex, it's a bass amp, but if I needed it, it's got the effects loop. Um, again, I showed you my bass multi-effects pedal, that's mainly what I use, and I use the uh, the Galleon Kruger uh, preamp simulator on there, because if I was going to have the bass amp of my dreams, it would be a Galleon Kruger, um, because I want to have all the bass equipment that uh, Justin Chancellor, the bass player from Tool, has. <laughs> so um, this is my bass amp, and it gets the job done. It's pretty nice. Now, before we get to the axes, I figured I'd kind of re-go over the effects pedals that I have and kind of show you the way I have the signal chain set up. So I wouldn't use this with the Fender Mustang because all of this that you see here is pretty much on that one, but not all of it is exactly to the same quality. So I like having a whole bunch of different stuff so you just have options for the way it to work. So to show you the path, the way I have it set up for with the orange amp is, first of all, the guitar goes into the noise suppressor here. And then from the noise suppressor, you, the way you use it is essentially you're treating it like it has its own effects loop. Um, if you just run stuff through it, it doesn't really silence it as well if you want it to be truly effective. What you've got to do is plug in to the input, then follow it from the send function. From the send function, I run it into the ME25, the feedbacker booster, and the distortion DS1. Then from there, it goes out into the orange amp. Then I go out from the orange amp's effects loop and go into the return of the noise suppressor. So essentially, anything that I would use for like distortion or boost or overdrive or anything like that from the ME25, the pedals and the amp, it's all in the noise suppressor so that it cuts out that hiss uh, in the background. Um, next we go out from the noise suppressor and into the modulation section of the loop. So over here I have the harmonist for guitar harmonies, pitch shifting, and whammy effects. And then I have the flanger, which you can also set the flanger to have like chorus or tremolo or vibe effects. It's a very nice pedal. And then finally at the end, the uh, digital delay, the DD8. Um, if you watched my other video, I didn't have the DD8 or the distortion at the time. Those are new additions to the family. Uh, and then from the DD8, it goes out back into the return of the effects loop of the orange amp. 
and then the signal for everything is all complete. So yeah, that's the way I run it with this setup. Uh, and I have everything, the pedals are all plugged into the one spot for the power. Uh, the noise suppressor also can daisy chain a couple of pedals. So I have that power in one. And the other thing that's new, I didn't have this at the time of the last video, but I have this uh, pedal board now. It's the pedal train nano. And there's Velcro on here. You put Velcro strips on it and on the back of your pedals so that they stay in place. So it's uh, quite a nice, handy little unit, that's for sure. Okay, now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. So here are the guitars that I have. This is a acoustic guitar. This is a Yamaha model of some sorts. I um, don't exactly know what type of guitar it is, like the model and number and all that stuff. Um, but it's a very nice Yamaha acoustic guitar. Um, it's got a built-in tuner, which is very nice, very useful. Um, and it's also got like a plug-in to put it through an amp, which is nice. Um, I have the strings that I showed in my last video, the uh, 56 to 13, I believe they were. That's on this guitar, and it's tuned to a D standard, because everything that sounds good in standard sounds better in D standard. Uh, and you can play like Ghost and Gochira and all that stuff, so it's really great. But yeah, this is the guitar. Very nice finish on it. Sounds very great. This guitar here is my first electric guitar. Uh, this is an Epiphone Special 2 with sort of the sunburst finish to it. Um, and you know, it's a simple guitar, right? Pickups, tone, volume, pickup selector. Um, this is my first guitar, and I don't play it as much anymore. I still think it works and gets the job done. You know, like, um, it's not like a $50 Squire by Fender or anything like that. It still can sound nice. Um, this one, I have the Ernie Ball Skinny Top Heavy Bottoms on, which are 52 to 10, because I like this guitar for either standard or drop D playing. You know, it's not the, the nice, simple gets the job done. Well, you know, I've had this one for, oh, how long have I been playing guitar for? Over 10 years at least. And I've had this one the whole time, you know. So, very nice, beautiful piece of musical equipment. Next guitar I have, this is the uh, Kramer Striker, I believe it is. Yeah, that's what this is. So this guitar is my guitar that has the uh, Floyd Rose floating bridge on it. Um, and what that is, if you don't know, you've probably seen guitars with this thing here, this little bar. This is your, your tremolo arm or your whammy bar, right? And when you push that down, it causes the strings to lose their tension. And, you know, you use that for, like, lots of bends or dive bombs or effects like that. You have whammy bars on, like, the regular Fender-type guitars, right? The regular uh, Stratocasters. But you can't get too crazy with those because your guitar goes out of tune very fast from the strings being depressed and stretched and bent all around. Um, so what the Floyd Rose system is, is it's a way to be able all this, but still do a good job of keeping the guitar in tune. So up on the top you'll see there's these little locking mechanisms, right? You screw those down, locks the strings in place. And when you have that down, don't try to tune these ones, because you'll be tuning it while it's tight here and you'll just break it there. Um, 
but you lock it there. And then this is a floating bridge, right? So like the uh, the tension is kind of like back and forth between all the other strings, which means if you tune one string sharp, you know, you, you tune it tight, all the other ones kind of pull the other way and they go flat. So keeping it in tune can be uh, a bit of a hassle. Um, and you have these little knobs here, which you can like twist around to make little fine tune adjustments when you've locked it in. Um, and then there's on the back, underneath the plate here, there's these screws. And again, that's like kind of keeping the tension in, in place. So I finally changed the strings on this today, actually. It was a, quite a lengthy process because you have to have like a piece of metal and stuff in here to prevent the bridge from going back and you, you tune one string down and tune it up and it's all over the place but uh, I've been playing with this one and it's uh, turned out all right nicely so far so that's good um, this one I like to have set for E flat D sharp standard um, and that's because a lot of the bands that I like that we use whammy bars, dive bombs, Floyd Rose and all that stuff is like Slayer, Van Halen, um, or Foivod. Um, I mean, they play it standard, but when they do their stuff live, it's in half step down. Um, so it's pretty much the tuning that you'd want to use all your dive bomb stuff for. Um, and even the bands that are in standard tuning, like Metallica, like just their stuff sounds better in half step down. Um, so that's usually how I have this guitar set for. So it's a bit of a hassle, but when I need to do all the stuff that's required with this guitar, it works quite well for all those things. Next guitar I have to show is, this is my other kind of main guitar, the one I think I've played the most. Uh, this is a Epiphone Les Paul Silver Burst. So, um, the reason I got this one is because Adam Jones from Tool, he has a Gibson Silverburst. Um, but obviously getting a Gibson Les Paul is quite expensive. So the Epiphone Les Paul was the more cheaper alternative. Um, also, there was one point where I, I broke the handle off of the pickup selector, but you can still select it fine. Um, so I've just kind of never bothered to get that fixed. I probably should. Um, you know, you've got all your tone and volume knobs here, right? It's a very nice guitar, very pretty. Sounds great. Really like how this guitar is. Um, so this one I usually have set for, well, originally I had it for standard as well, but, um, lately this is the one I have the mammoth strings on. Sixty-two to twelve, or something like that. Um, yeah, but the bottom one's sixty-two. Uh, this one I have set for D standard. I know with your mammoth strings, those are more for like B or C or A. But I like the thickness. I'm down with the thickness. So mammoth strings, sixty-two set to D standard on this one. Not too much else to say. It just is a very nice guitar. That I specifically got because I wanted to be like Tool. And the last guitar I have to show for you, this is my seven string guitar, which this is an Ibanez uh, ART 300 or something. I um, can't remember the number, it's the, the Artist series Ibanez. Um, so it's a seven string guitar. Seven strings meant to be one to two and lower than your standard one. Um, if you have your guitar in standard tuning, the seventh string would be tuned down to B, whereas the sixth string is normally E for comparison. Um, this one is nothing too special. I wanted a seven string guitar, and this one was very cheap, so I bought it, you know. It's not like a Floyd Rose or anything. Um, and as you can tell, I like the Les Paul shape. It's just classic and stuff. This one's a cutaway as well, with 24 frets, so you can get up there to the higher stuff. Very nice. But the tuning for this one is a little weird. I just gave it a try one day, and I've liked it so much that that's just...
is what I've dedicated this guitar for. So, um, normally, right, your seventh string would be B, sixth string E, A, yeah, D, G, B, E. Um, and so what I've done with this is, um, I've tuned it down. So the six regular strings is the equivalent of C sharp standard, or also I tune it sometimes to drop B, right? It's a great tuning with C sharp standard. It gives you like some of the King Gizzard stuff on Infest the Rat's Nest, and it gives you a lot of the middle era of uh, the, the Aussie era Sabbath middle years, right? Like uh, Master of Reality, the Volume 4, and the Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, all that stuff's in C sharp standard. Nice and heavy. Um, so the seventh string is then tuned all the way down to F sharp. Uh, and that's so that if you're in C sharp standard and you're playing an F sharp on the fifth fret here, you can also hit the open F sharp to give you that extra octave for real nice lowness. So in a way, it's kind of tuned to like a discount eight string. Um, Cause on an eight string, your lowest string is an F sharp. Um, so I've just skipped over uh, the seventh string in a way. Um, and then for the strings that I put on this one is um, embarrassingly, I actually messed it up. Um, the time I put these ones on and I haven't fixed it, I probably just will wait until I change them again. I'm just gonna but what it's supposed to be is, you know, instead of putting, uh, I buy an eight string set, and instead of putting the first string up on the top in the first string spot, I put the second string there, and then in the second string spot, I put the third string, and so on and so forth. So what I've actually put in the sixth string spot is the thickness of the seventh string, and then in the seventh string spot, I have the thickness of the eighth string. So instead of going from like 64 to 10, it goes from 74 to 13, because um, it needs to go very low. So I want it like the thickest string possible. And I figured, well, if I can't get an individual string at a 74, I'll just buy an eight string package and ignore that top one. Save that 10 for like the other sets. If I break the E string, but the one problem that I had, embarrassingly to admit, I realized that I messed up um, which one the order. So I accidentally put the eighth string in the sixth string spot, and the seventh string is the seventh string. So I've got a seventh string that's very, very loose, because it's down to F sharp, and I've got a sixth string that's tuned to B and C, and it's a 74. So it is quite thick indeed. Oops. So, um, it's a little too late, I think, to just wind them down and fix that. So, I'm just gonna ride it out and play with it for now. I mean, it, it still works. It's just a very thick sixth string. And my string below that is thinner. Um, but the next time I change the strings, I'll make sure it's correct so that I get that setup that I want, um, and it's perfect for all that sludgy electric wizardness, you know, you get this with the orange amp, and you use the DS1 as a boost on it, um, and it just sounds so dirty and gross, I, I love it. And last, but certainly not least, uh, we cannot forget the bass guitar, right? So, you know, if you don't like bass players and stuff, this is your chance to uh, click off the video real quick. So, this is my bass guitar. It's a, uh, it's a Jackson um, five string silver burst. Um, so this one I got for two reasons. One, so I would have a bass, silver burst bass that matched the silver burst guitar. And two, this is meant to kind of be very similar to the bass that uh, Dave Ellison of Megadeth 
Beth uses because I love his bass tone, especially on Rest in Peace. Um, everyone knows that for being a, a guitar album with all these great guitar parts, but the bass on that album is very great also, right? Um, so good that he even got his own little bass solo thing with Dawn Patrol. So, yeah, this is the bass. It's obviously very difficult to fit it all in one shot. Um, this one I don't have tuned to anything fancy. It's just usually standard or half step down. The fifth string then goes down to B or D sharp. Um, you've got EQ controls and your volumes for your pickups and all that stuff. It's extended range and cutaway. It goes all the way up to 24. And when I play bass, I'm playing in like none of this like, you know, follow the bass line, boring stuff. I play bass with a pick because I'm a bad bass player. And I play chords and I'm playing up past the 12th fret and I do like all the Foivod, Cliff Burton, like distortion and the wall and all that stuff, right? Like I just go absolutely crazy with it, right? Because if you're not playing it like it's a rhythm guitar, well, I don't know, that's, that's just my style, right? Um, I think I have it half step down right now. Not sure, or maybe. Oh no, actually, I have it in D standard. Obviously, I'm not really going to be playing these right now, but you know, that's the main bass guitar that I have. I don't have multiple ones. I'd be interested in getting a real nice four string, maybe one to have in a drop tuning, you know, just for some variety here and there. Well, that pretty much covers it. You know, those are my amps. Those are my guitars. That's how I have pedals set up and laid out. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that was uh, what some of y'all were looking for. Obviously I didn't play anything because you know, if I was shredding on a guitar with all my distortion and stuff, it probably isn't very relaxing. But if you are interested, I have considered the possibility of making a video that would be purely showing you guitar sounds. Uh, it wouldn't be an ASMR video, and it wouldn't be for relaxation or anything like that. Um, but I have considered it, you know, just uh, jamming out for a bit so you can hear how it sounds. So let me know if you do actually want to hear how this all sounds when I have it set up. Uh, and if so, maybe I'll post a little thing. But again, that won't be a very relaxing video per se. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the guitar stuff. Those are my amps. Those are my axes. Um, still working on the Dead Space videos. Again, I think Dead Space 1 is already four hours. Dead Space 2 